Welcome back. A local research team has discovered how the dengue virus bypasses the immune system, and this could potentially help to design an effective vaccine for the virus. Now, dengue cases here, as you know, hit a record high of over 22,300 cases last year. And researchers from the Duke NUS Graduate Medical School say that developing a more targeted vaccine therapy is imperative, and they're hoping to do this with their discovery of how exactly the virus shuts down the body's immune system response. The challenge for finding a vaccine for dengue lies in the fact that the virus has four different types of strains, so the immune response to each strain is different. It's hoped that with this new research, it will clarify how exactly the dengue virus evades the immune response. So to tell us more about the research is Dr. Ui Eng Yong from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at the Duke NUS Graduate Medical School. So doctor, thank you very much for coming in today. So uh, in an early report, you said the one thing that dengue or the dengue virus does very well is to take advantage of our antibodies to make us or to make things worse. Uh, what do you mean by that exactly? Right. So first of all, there are four different types of dengue virus. And because they are related, and when our immune system mounts an antibody response, it, it, it can't really differentiate these four very well, so it, it binds to all four, but it really only protects against one. And so the binding to all four essentially provides the remaining three viruses with a key, as it were. Right? So, so for example, a, a good way of thinking about this is imagine a, a thief trying to get into a house. Okay. It's just that the main door is not a very, it's a bit jammed, so it doesn't go in very well. So it tries to get in by the back door, and the antibody is the back door. But the problem with the back door is that it's actually very tightly linked to an alarm system. So to get in, it has to disable the alarm. Right. And so th what the research showed is how dengue virus actually disables, disables. the alarm. I see. So right. uh, it suppresses the immune system. But in most cases, this is not a permanent effect, is it? That's right. That's right. It's a, it, it just needs it for, you know, at least in the, in the research that we have done in the lab setting, it only does that, it needs that only for about a few hours, just to, so that it can get in without the cell knowing that it's inside. Okay. Once it's inside, then it's able to do the other things that it needs to do. So in designing a potential vaccine, uh, you know, what are you going to be focusing on and what would that vaccine look like? So what we've shown in the, in the work is that if, if you can somehow block dengue virus from basically triggering that, that switch that then switches the, the, our immune system off yeah. in order to get in, uh, if you can block that, then it, 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 it doesn't really replicate very well. Right? So if, when it comes through the back door, it essentially meets a very hostile environment. So what, what we think we can, you can do is that if you can make a vaccine to, to trigger an antibody that blocks that, that ability of the virus to switch that thing, the, the circuit off, yeah. then when it, when it comes into the white cell, the white cell knows that it's there, it will tackle it. Wow, so, right. I mean, but there are four strains. Right. So would you have to develop just one vaccine or, or would you need four? So this current strategy is, of course, to, build, to, to develop one vaccine right. for each virus. Uh, but I, I think that you know, with, with the advances in science the, uh, that we are, we are seeing now and with the current technologies, uh, it may be possible that we actually design one vaccine that get, works against all four, uh, and which might solve one of the problems now because essentially you're making four different vaccines, so it will take four times as long than any other, uh, any other right. vaccine. Not only that, but when you want to put them all together, you have to make sure that you've got the right balance, mm -hmm. and that's not easy to do. So, so perhaps it's time to rethink how we, 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 uh, the, the strategy that we have adopted to okay. make a vaccine. So, so far your research has been very successful in diagnosing dengue, and you have pinprick tests which can tell whether you have it or not within about half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, any further developments in that particular area? Uh, it's that, that's not the focus in our lab right now, but there are a lot of other uh, oh, work that's going on internationally. Um, I think the one thing that would really drive the adoption of these tests would be if there's a drug that works against dengue virus. Uh, because right now, even if you di diagnose dengue, the treatment is still the same. It's just observation and, and supportive. Whereas if there's a specific drug like anti-HIV drug, something, yeah. then early diagnosis, you start the right therapy, you get rid of the problem. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of like goes hand in hand, a, 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 a quick diagnostic and, and a good therapy, but we lack that therapy to drive the diagnostic use. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. Very promising, and thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. Pleasure speaking to you. That was Dr. Uyan. How his team is working uh, to find a viable vaccine for dengue. In the meantime,